If you are live, subscribe. If you are live, subscribe. It's your favorite guy, Ricky, back again. Um, I always want to thank you guys for the continual support that you guys show me, the love that you guys show me. Um, I don't take it lightly. They always say Nashville don't support Nashville. I, I, I got something different from that. I've got the support that I've needed. Uh, I could ask for more, which I want more. And I always ask people to share my video, like it, and, and, and let it be known what I'm doing. And let it be known that I'm doing this for the city of Nashville. I'm going to hold it down. Uh, we always talk about being the voice of Nashville, which uh, shout out to my girl, Aviana. I'm going to talk to her in a minute, about her in a minute. But uh, it's all about us being a voice for Nashville. You know what I'm saying? It's about us getting... Uh, our community out there, we got we got people who's doing real estate, and we got a lot of good artists, and and I'm talking about artists on all genres, as in paintings and rap and singing and stuff. And uh, I just always wonder what happened to Nashville. When I came up, we all showed each other love. Um, uh, I'm gonna just use the rap community uh in it for this example. When somebody was performing at the club or somebody was opening, we were showing up and we know how to show love in the club and have a good time and really give support to where it's needed for the people that's actually trying to do something and further their career. And I just don't know what happened to that. Now it's like everybody's broke up and this person hate this person and this person hate that person. And... We can't bring, we cannot bring no notoriety to what we're doing if we're working against each other. I've been trying to explain this for forever. Um, I tell people, I want you to get in podcasts because I want Nashville to be noticed that they got good guys, they got good journalists, they got good hosts, they got everything they need in Nashville and we want to be a part of it and we want to see what they're doing and so it brings attention to what we're doing it's enough people for everybody so i'm not selfish with a platform because i understand i'm not the only good uh person that's doing this and i was listening to uh bishop walker's wife she was saying that we're so caught up on uh, the next person gift that we don't even see the gift that we bring to the table. I think people look at each other like, well, you have that gift. I don't have that gift. I only have this it's gift. Right. But not recognizing Man. that it takes the giftings from every individual pulling them together for the collective whole. I can get behind this camera. I can do a good job and I'm hype and everything is good. But if O behind this camera don't do his job, then the job is not completed. So again, don't worry about how good this person doing their job. Just make sure you do your job good. And I, and I wanna bring back, I wanna talk about my guy Bree. Shout out to Bree. Uh, I have adopted him as my little brother. And why, I, why I'm lifting him up is because of this. Because he understand he understand how to work together. He understand that we are better together. He is trying to, he's not selfish with his platform. I have saw him share his platform on multiple levels with the people that he support in Nashville and outside of Nashville. I always tell, I put, I put my money on Bree on this, on this rap. Hip hop. I put my money on Bree because not only is he talented in what he do in his music, he also has a grind. I'm telling you, he's my motivator. <laughs> There's a lot of people that can motivate me, but you have to really be pushing. You can't just push in Nashville and motivate me. You have to do shows in Atlanta and Cali and all these places like Lil Bree. And so I want to be, I want to be motivated by somebody. I don't want to be the only person that feel like I'm going to the next level. I uh, talked to Bree one day and I'm thinking that me and him, we working at our highest level. I've been doing my thing. He's been doing his thing. And he said, he said, um, he said, AP, <laughs> he said, 
I'm finna turn it up. And I was like, we already turned it up. like, no, I'm finna turn it up. And so he made, he made me understand that now I have to turn it up even more. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, I'm going to keep on supporting Bree. I'm going to hold him, uh, even though that's my little brother and our relationship is is where it is and it can't be tampered with, it can't be touched, nothing. But um, I'm going to hold him accountable to doing what he's doing, not only for himself, for the people around him. And so shout out to Bree. To live Bree, I want y'all can Google him anywhere, but shout out to little bruh. And he's going to hold it down. Another person before, because I want to get into talking about Puffy and all these guys. But another person I want to lift up, Avriana Personality. Shout out to Avriana, new job. Uh, Yoko, Young and Country. If you haven't went to 96.7 and checked out Avriana Personality, the voice of Cashville, you are slipping. Uh, Polo the Don started it. And I just always, again... Avriana's another one. I put my money on her. I put my money on Avriana when it's coming to journalistic that she's one of the best in the country. Everywhere she is, I always talk about resources. Avriana ain't scared to share her resources. She is, she is one of the people in Nashville, like Bree, that she's not uh, scared to share her resources. If one of her resources is in the building, she's going to say, hey, this is P. She's going to give you a formal introduction. I always tell people this. If your people come in town and you're with your people and you don't give them a formal introduction to me, that means you look at me like I'm nobody. And so Avriana holds that area down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She holds it super duper down in making sure the people that she know, which is a lot of people, they know who we are and what we're doing. I shared her post the other day and I liked it, the post. It wasn't nothing that I was, I, if, if, if I share your post, it's not because uh, you are my little sister, because that's my little sister. Uh, but it's because I really enjoy what you posted. And when she posted the sexy red, doing the thing, you know what I mean? She would do her little sexy red thing. I posted and tagged sexy red. And sexy red came up under the post. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just saying, if we get it and start understanding that it just takes a share. You know what I'm saying? Support is, is, is in the share. I, I want you guys to support in all the other areas. But at the least, you can do is share. And so shout out again to Avriana Personality, my little sis. She's over there, Yoko, Young and Country, 96.7. Again, I don't know exactly what time she on, but you can go to her, her page. And uh, shout out to Bubba Sparks and, um, and Cole McCoy's over there, too. So, man, look, we're going to hold our people down no matter what. We're going to support. I'm a... I'm a supporter of my people. Like, no matter if my platform holding 100 people or holding 1,000 people, they going to know about you. So, again, uh, shout out to two Nashville natives that's actually doing their thing and actually working hard. And I hold accountable to what they're doing, and that's Bree and Avriana. Now that we got that out the way, let me take these off because I want to uh, I wanna dig into this. I want to talk about the Diddy. But I want to talk about this one guy. His name is Lord Avery II. Yeah, <laughs> look, you, you wondering who is this? You finna know who he is. Lord Avery II is the guy on Boys in the Hood that shot and killed Rick. And the reason why his story, it was so kind of, it was like, and I'm, and, and I'm talking about the Diddy stuff and we're talking about Cali and Hollywood, but I wanted to bring this, this Hollywood story up first. He had two minutes of screen time. He had four lines. He, he had, no, he had four scenes with eight lines. He was listed in the credits as knucklehead number two. And he was known as the blood to shot Ricky. You know what I'm saying? Every, everybody know that guy. But when I read his story, you know how you always see these guys in this, these movies and you want to know what are they doing 
after the movie. You know what I'm saying? You just want to kind of know like what's going on. To make a long story short, after the movie, he moved to a neighborhood in California. It was a blood neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And so after a while living in a blood neighborhood, he actually became the blood that shot Ricky. You know what I'm saying? He actually, he actually became a blood. And so his story was kind of wild to where um, he went to college and all this stuff before that and, and studied for movie. And he finally made a movie. But um, it was some playing that gangster role. Would you say it kind of took a toll on him of being a gangster? So make a long story short, he ended up uh, going to the blood hood, joining the bloods and doing what they do. And he shot and killed two people over drugs and I always say that about I don't care how strong you are who you are if, if, if you're moving to uh, if, if you go to a safe instance, if you go to a barbershop for a week or for two weeks you finally gonna get a cut you gonna get something you gonna get you gonna get an edge up you gonna get a mustache trim you gonna get something but uh, he became a blood he killed the two, two people and with him being just a college guy and now in the movies, like what transformed to being in the movies and then you want to be in the game and then you want to be the actual, the actual character that, sh that you know what I'm saying, that, that shot and actually killed the man in the movie, lead out to the movie, now actually shooting, killing somebody. And so the funny thing was when he shot and killed people, he was on the run, he actually did two more movies while he was on the run for murder. Got to prison. Finally, they finally caught him. Got to prison. Got to prison. Got killed in his cell by his cellmate. And I, I always, and my whole thing about this story, because it was a Hollywood story, and it's also a story of where I come from, live by the gun, die by the gun. And I'm going somewhere with this, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this story, live by the gun, die by the gun. Um, you know, and, and I'm just saying die in a crazy way. So he, he said he killed him in prison. He said he was like a devil worshiper. He changed his life. He went to prison. But the reason I told you this story I want to talk about Diddy is this. Do we put our rich people on a plateau? I want to I wanna just, I want to I wanna say this real quick. If I'm P. Diddy and I just happen to maybe go broke or something and I come rob you for $1,000, and P. Diddy come rob somebody for $1,000, they're going to say, oh, yeah, P. Diddy, he just went broke and he was having a hard time and you guys are going to have mercy on him. Because I guess because he's been rich and he's had money and now he just made a bad decision. But what about the guy that robbed you that you don't know that's a stranger, that he might be homeless? When he come rob you, you automatically say, this is a bad guy. He was home. He was selling drugs. He robbed you. He's a bad guy. What makes him different from Diddy? And the reason why I'm bringing up this situation is I'm, 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 I'm just saying, saying this. Um, everybody, the whole headlines are saying, y'all always tearing down the black man. How many people has this black man tore down? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's almost like this. If I'm a certain caliber, you can't, and something happened to me, you can't say nothing to me, but I can do whatever I want to, to a whole heap, a whole crowd of people and it's okay. You know what I'm saying? And so uh I'm not I'm not saying that he's innocent. I'm not saying he's guilty, but what I'm saying is I went to prison because of some choices that I made. And when I got to prison, I didn't say Oh, y'all dogging me. They yeah, they might have mistreated me a little bit and it might have not been fair, but I understood that I did something wrong to get there. And so 
if I'm using my platform for women, because I like women, if I'm using my platform for them to come on and say, hey, you got to have sex with me to come on my platform. That's wrong. That's wrong. I, I, I think about Donald Sterling, the one that got fired from the, uh, uh, I don't know, I forgot which team it was. It might have been the Clippers. It might was the Clippers, LA Clippers. And he got fired for his racial thing and uh, don't talk to no black guys. He was telling that, but he was saying, he was saying this. He was, he said, what's wrong with black people is this. They're not like Jews. We actually give our money to our people. And so I'm, I'm saying this, I'm saying for all black men, that's a high caliber of a person. It's our obligation to lift our people up. It's I have an obligation on my platform. If you're a live subscribe show, I got an obligation to uh, help my people get what they doing out there and uh, helping their businesses and their company. Now, if I don't do that, you got to put me in the same realm of the man that's trying to keep me down and not let me get to where I'm trying to go. And so any black man in my eyesight got an obligation. If you've made it to a certain plateau and you know a lot of people that I don't care if you guys say, hey, here go $100,000, you can just have it. And go ahead and get your platform where it's going. Get your business off the ground. Uh, a lot of people ain't doing nothing but dying with a lot of money. It was never intended to be that way. And so if you're a black man and you are taking advantage of your people and you are making them do anything out outside of doing the job that they need to do to get to where they need to go, then I have to hold you accountable for that. And just because you say you sorry, that don't mean you still don't have to pay the consequences. I could have told the judge, I, to, I told the judge, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it, but I still had to pay for my consequences. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, and I always hate that when, 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 when one person come out, a lot of people come out, but everybody don't have the power just to come out. And so anybody that's taking advantage of the black community and what they stand for and their talent, I have a problem with that, no matter who you are. So I don't have to agree. I don't have to agree with you because you are of a certain caliber. I don't have to respect you because you got a certain caliber of money and you are a big figure. I'd rather just keep on doing what I'm doing. And so um, innocent to proven guilty. And we ain't going to never, we ain't going to ever, you know, knock our black men down. But uh, you have to pay the consequences for when you do something wrong. And if you've done something wrong, no matter who you are, you got to pay a debt. If you're a live subscribe.